Hi, I'm Andy Jones, Content Editor for Platt's online education program, Let's Paint. Welcome to Color Lessons. Today we're painting Miss Anne's Daisies. For all of our color lessons, I'm using Folk Art's Pure Artist Pigment Paint. It's been specially formulated to be very, very thick so that you can use this for a wide range of painting techniques. We can use it thin down for transparent watercolor effects, or you can use it with a palette knife for really thick, rich impasto work. The 20 colors of Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments are available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. And in the set, there is also a great color theory worksheet that is specially coded for you to paint on and reuse if you'd like to. And this is included in the kit with the 20 colors. So this is a great color theory booklet, and we also support this with an online video. I'm also using the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Mixing Mat. And this is a great tool to use in place of a palette. It's a reusable silicone mat, and it has spaces to put your colors out around the edge of the palette. Part of it is gray, so that you can see exactly what value of colors that you're using. Part of it's white, so that you can see how transparent a color is. It also has a quick guide for color harmonies as well as a little vocabulary list so that you can keep yourself familiar with color theory terms. This is a great product and I think you'll really enjoy using it and you can use it over and over and over. It cleans off beautifully and does not stain. For all the color lessons, I'm using the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush. These brushes have been designed with a firm bristle synthetic filament and it is great for canvas painting. It will stand up to lots of abuse. With care and cleaning, these brushes will last you a long, long time. They're perfect for canvas painting, as well as any other kind of fabric painting that you're going to do. I think you're really going to love these Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. They're available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint in a package of seven beautiful brushes. Some of you are concerned that you can't draw. Well, we've got you covered because we're teaching you how to paint, not how to draw. The color lessons come with a package of full color photographs so that you have a complete uh, set of all of the photographs for all of your color lessons paintings. In addition to that, we have full size pattern sheets. So they're uh, printed out for you so you don't have to enlarge anything and you can transfer the designs directly to your canvas. So these also are available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. I'm going to be working on a clear primed linen canvas today. And this is a wonderful uh, surface to work on. Uh, the Belgian linen canvas uh, just looks fantastic by itself. So you don't really have to work very hard uh, to make your painting look good because it's already starting out on a terrific background. I have transferred my design uh, that comes in your uh, kit so that you can have a general idea about where your flowers are, your stems, and your vase. And I'm also going to be using a T-square to make sure that my table line is square to the edge of my canvas. So I'm going to put the T-square on here. And then I'm just using a colored pencil and I'm just going to kind of emphasize the table line a little bit with my colored pencil. And I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides of the vase. And this will make sure that my table line is level and square to the edge of the canvas. I've also taken my black colored pencil and just kind of uh, darkened up some of the uh, design lines indicating the reflection of the vase and the outside edges of the vase get the bottom down there. And I'm just coloring this on like you would uh, if you were just sketching on the canvas, just making sure to get some nice, good, dark areas on. And then we want to, uh, this is kind of like a mason jar. So I'm just gonna indicate a little bit of the ridges of the jar and just draw these on. They don't have to be perfect. Just be neat and careful as you apply the color. Then you'll see how we uh, continue to use uh, the colored pencil to define some of the areas of our painting. We are going to start uh, up at the top area where our flowers are and we're going to indicate some background color. Uh, so we're just going to brush some interesting 
color on in the background of the painting. And if you look at my palette, I have used the Folk Art Pure Artist pigments, and I have yellow ochre, pure black, naphthol crimson, Payne's gray, alizarin crimson, and sap green out on the palette right now. We'll be adding some other colors a little bit later, and I'm using the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes, and this is a three-quarter inch brush, but I think I'm gonna move up to the one inch size, and I'm going to dress the brush with floating medium, and this is Folk Art Floating Medium that I have in a little cup that I sit on my palette, so I always know where my floating medium is, and it isn't uh, spreading out on the palette. So to dress the brush, that simply means to dip your brush in the floating medium and then work that into the bristles of the brush. And we are going to make a transparent wash of color to add in behind some of these daisies. So I'm picking up some alizarin crimson, but that's gonna be just too bright by itself. So I'm also gonna add in just a little bit of Payne's Gray to darken that just a little bit. And there I've added too much Payne's Gray, so we're gonna add a little bit more alizarin crimson. Wanna make sure that it's a reddish color. And then I'm just gonna tone that red by adding a small amount of sap green, because I want kind of an interesting red burgundy color. And so I'm going to, now that I've mixed that color on my brush, I'm going to wipe the brush on my paper towel just to clean out that excess amount of color that's in my brush. And then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of floating medium. So basically my brush is just dirty with a very little bit of floating medium on there. And when we come up here on our design, I am going to begin to use the corner of my brush holding my brush with the tip of the handle in my palm, and I'm just going to scrub some of this color on uh, behind the daisies. And you can see this is a very, very transparent color. It may not even be showing up too well. Uh, just barely showing up, but I've added a little bit more color to my brush now, and I'm just scrubbing some of this on, making sure that it has an interesting uh, shape to it. I'm not trying to outline the flowers. I'm letting some of the color uh, is going to come inside the flowers and some of it's going to come outside. I'm going to bring some of it down there. Just kind of creating an interesting uh, little bit of very transparent red color here in my design. So nothing very difficult there. And I'm going to continue to put some of this very transparent red color on. And I want some of it down here next to the reflection and next to the vase. So I'm just gonna brush a little bit of that on. Being careful not to go above my table line or I don't really wanna come into the vase. So I'm just gonna brush some of this on right there. Bring a little bit on here. And then just kind of scrub to soften that out a little bit. That's plenty of red there. And I want to repeat some of that on the opposite side of the vase. So I'm just gonna come over here and just brush a little bit of a blush on the table area over here. Okay, so that is the very initial stage of the painting. We're just establishing some little red areas on there. So now I'm going to pick up a little bit more color on my brush and I'm going to add a little bit of naphthol crimson to the mixture here on the palette. So the color now is just a little bit stronger and I'm going to begin to come right next to some of the flowers and you can see now that I've got a much stronger color on my brush. Just kind of brushing some of this color on, just creating some interesting uh, reds here in the background. And I don't want this to be the same uh, value all over the background. So a uh, little bit more alizarin crimson here. I'm just gonna flick that little bit of debris off the canvas. Just kind of using the corner of the brush or the flat of the brush, just to kind of get some color. And I'm gonna leave it very faint over here. And I'm just gonna make it a little stronger right in this area. Just want this to be uh, a little bit of an interesting um, 
kind of color in the background just to kind of set the mood for what we've got going on. So I need to come in and put a little bit of color right in here just so we don't have raw canvas with no color on it. Okay, so here we have established uh, the background. First uh, application of color, very, very, very transparent. And then the second application, a little bit more color and just a little bit of brighter red on there. So at this point, uh, you can take a break and you can dry your canvas. And I'm gonna use a heat gun to dry mine. And so I'll show you uh, how I just kind of move the heat gun uh, across the face of the canvas to dry this pretty quickly. And then we'll move on to our next step. When you're drying your canvas, always look at uh, the canvas in raking light so that you can see if your paint is shiny or dull. And with the Folk Art Pure Artist pigments, you want to make sure that your paint has no sheen to it whatsoever. Uh, so when it's completely matte uh, and not shiny, then you know that it is dry and you're ready to move on. If you've been using a heat tool or a heat gun to dry your canvas, you want to make sure to allow your canvas to come back to room temperature. You don't want to I start to paint on a hot canvas. I'm going to pick up a three quarter inch flat brush and a little bit of floating medium, dress the brush in the floating medium. And I'm going to pick up a little yellow ochre on my brush, just kind of picking the color up mainly on just one half of the brush. As you can see here, I have just a little bit of color and some floating medium on the brush. And what I want to do is to begin to establish painting the vase. And we are really going to not paint the vase. We're going to paint some color on our vase, but not really try to attempt to actually paint a vase. So I'm just going to let this yellow ochre just kind of fade off, just soften that color in a little bit. And later on in the painting, you'll see that this yellow ochre relates to the flower centers that we're going to paint but we're just beginning to establish a little bit of gold uh, here and there in our vase. And so we'll have a little bit of a water line that's going to come across the front of our vase. And we need to make sure that that has a nice curve to it. So we're just accenting that curvature of the water line, just straight across the vase there with that nice little curve. And then I'm going to soften that yellow up above the water line. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow down here in the bottom of the vase. And just feather that up. And if I have a reflection of my vase where I've feathered that color up, then below in the reflection, I would have that same yellow ochre and it would disappear and feather down from the bottom of the vase. So very simple techniques that we're using here, and we're going to create the illusion of a jar filled with water, and we're just simply not going to paint that much detail into it. Okay, next thing we're going to do, I'm going to wipe my brush off on a shop towel. I wanna to show you that I pinch the brush between the shop towel that takes the paint out of the brush, and it also makes sure to groom the brush back to a nice sharp chisel edge. So get in the habit of putting your brush down, folding the paper towel over it, and then pulling the brush through as your way of wiping the brush. That will keep your brush in good shape and it'll keep paint off of your hands. Okay, we are going to now begin to develop some of the stems on our painting. So I'm still gonna use the three quarter inch brush and I'll pick up a little bit of sap green and some floating medium. And I'm going to add just a little bit of alizarin crimson into this mix just to tone that green down because we definitely don't want that to be a very bright green. So also adding 
some floating medium will help make this color a little bit more transparent. And we're just going to begin to establish some of the stems in our vase. So I'm gonna have some stems that are gonna start over here and they're going to continue up into the vase. Just lightly brushing this on and I'm gonna turn this into two stems in just a minute. So it looks like a huge stem there, but it's not gonna stay that way. Then I'm gonna have another set of stems coming from down here. And I'm just brushing this on, letting these stems come up into the vase. Don't worry too much about how these stems are looking right now, because we're just establishing them, uh, just getting some color on. Just softening this back a little bit. Another stem that's going to come right up in the middle here. So also, they have to be reflected. So that's going to come right down there. This is going to reflect across here. Then we'll have just a little bit of this other stem reflecting, but not nearly as distinct as these are. Still using the same color. I'm going to make sure that I get some stems that come up from the vase and connect to our flowers. So we're just going to brush these on. Again, this is just a transparent uh, green color that we have. Paint these stems on. We're going to come back and do more to them. This is just the initial placement of some stems. Just bring a little bit of that down into the jar where that would like be resting up against the edge of the jar there. And I'm still using the three quarter inch flat brush. I don't need a small brush to lock these stems in. So over here, we'll have a little stem that connects back into our flowers. Just kind of adding stems in. You can follow your pattern exactly, or you can kind of just add some stems where you think they need to be. Now I need a little bit more stem coming up out here to this flower out here. And then over here we need some stem. It's going to connect the back side of that daisy to the rest of our flowers. All right, so let's come back and add a little bit more interest to the stems inside the vase. So I'm taking my sap green plus Payne's gray plus a little alizarin crimson and I'm adding less floating medium than I had before. So this color is going to be a bit more opaque. And what I'm going to do is show you how I turn this into two stems. So we're going to just divide that stem just like that. And now you see that you've got a light and a dark stem there. We can divide this one the same way. Just picking up a little bit more color on my brush. And we're just going to divide this. Into two different stems. And this will all make sense when we add our highlights on there. So just a little bit of color, darker color where that stem goes back behind the other one. And we'll darken there. We'll increase the contrast here, just adding a little bit more dark color. 
in just a little bit over there just to add some variety in. This stem back here is kind of hiding back behind these others. So we're just going to add some extra dark color right there. And then where this stem goes underneath these others, add some dark there. Add a little bit of dark where it comes out on this other side. And you can see that we're starting to create the separation of our stems. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the same dark color, which is sap green, alizarin crimson, and a little Payne's gray. Just brush mixing this color. And we're going to add in a little bit of shading here on the stems where they disappear behind the flowers. Kind of keep all of this a little bit on the casual side. Just kind of darken where you think one stem looks like it's going underneath another. Brush mix a little bit of color as you need it. You don't need to have too much paint on the canvas here. Okay, let's pick up some sap green and a little yellow ochre. And I think I'm actually going to put out a little bit of titanium white on my palette. Just so I can lighten this up just a little bit. So here on my palette, I'm mixing some sap green, some yellow ochre, and some titanium white. I've not put my brush in water. I've not cleaned it out at all. I just wipe it out as I need to. And then I can come in and add more color and just brush mix right on my mixing mat. So now we're gonna come back up to our stems and we're going to highlight where one stem goes across another. And this is not the final highlight. We're going to come back and put some more on. We're just getting some light color on there. Put a little bit to highlight where one stem is on top of another here. And down here, we'll carry this across. Do the same thing up here. Just make sure that we get a little bit of light color to indicate where one stem is crossing another. and add some more white to this to brighten it up even more. And then once again, just where we need those stems to be lighter, just brush a little bit of this on. I'm not trying to really blend or soften this color in. I'm basically just laying some light color on just to separate my stems one from the other. And we'll carry just a little bit of this light color down into our reflection. And again, don't try to blend this in. We're, this other color is probably sticky or dry, so we are just really just laying on a little highlight on top of it. Not too much paint in the brush. Just enough to lay that highlight color on. Adding a little bit of white to my mix. 
that, I want to come back and make sure that this is really a little brighter here. And we can come back and refine this anytime that we need to while we're painting. Always be looking and evaluating what's happening on your canvas. This needs to be brighter here. So I've just brightened that color up. And now I've made that stem really come forward a little bit. And we're not done with the vase yet, so don't, don't think that's the end of that. We're just adding a little bit of highlight color on the stems inside the vase. And wherever we need to here in the painting, just to bump that up a little bit. And these can stay dark over here because this is where we want more of our interest and we're not so concerned at uh, making these little stems here at the outside edge of the painting all that important. All right, so let's let you catch up with the stems to this point and then we're going to dry the canvas and come back and start to establish a little bit more of a shadow effect on our table and underneath our vase. So if you want to pause the video, bring your painting up to this stage and then dry it. Okay, our painting is completely dry now and I wanna take my uh, colored pencil and I want to define some more of our shaded areas. So I'm literally just going to come in here and color some darkness on with a colored pencil. Just darken, 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 shading where one stem goes behind another one. Can clean that up a little bit and do the same thing here. Just darken, darken, darken. Down here where one stem goes behind another, really creating a nice refined, sharpened area. Just coloring this on. And don't worry, we'll soften this up with some paint and water in just a few minutes. But we can really clean up the edge of the stem here and create a nice division going along here, just drawing this on and coloring it in a little bit, add a little extra shading there. But this is a, a very quick and very easy way to come in and define some of these areas. If your brush skills are not that great, you can certainly do this extra drawing with a colored pencil and you can see how we are really changing the way these stems look uh, just by accenting them with the use of a colored pencil and we create much more dramatic shadows and shadow down here where we really are separating uh, these stems and then we can just add some extra dark down here in our reflections just kind of scrub this on just drawing some extra darkness on as needed and so the use of a colored pencil is a nice little um, shortcut uh, to help you get some clean defined edges and just tuck in some extra darks where you need to on your canvas. So we're gonna set our colored pencil aside and I'm going to pick up um, a three quarter inch flat brush that I have rinsed out in water so it's clean. And I'm going to pick up a little floating medium, just kind of work that into the brush don't need to have too much in my brush. And I'm going to pick up a little Payne's Gray just on one corner of the brush. And just soften that here on the palette. And I'm also going to pick up just a little tiny bit of black because I really do want a nice, nice dark color. And I'm working this into the brush, into the floating medium, so that I am creating a nice gradient of color on my brush. So you can see that very clearly here where I have dark color and then it fades across into nothing. So we are going to use that uh, to our advantage and we are going to begin to add some dark color here on our table area. Next to our vase, we're just gonna set the brush down and add in some nice dark color. We're gonna stretch this out along the table line Bring it down next to the vase. Catch that where the vase curves around. And then I'm just going to come back in here and just soften this dark color on. I'm softening at a bit of an angle because I want to keep the dark color where I've applied it and then just generally soften it out into the table. And that just gives me a little 
uh, definition of a table line off to the right. And we're not done. We'll come back to this and reinforce this. So this is paints gray and black that's loaded just on one side or one half of a big flat brush. And then we're going to come over here and do the same thing over on the left side of the base and just establish a little bit that's stretching out next to our table line. Work slowly and carefully so that you keep that nice and neat and straight. And then we're going to carry this down next to the vase and underneath the vase. And then we'll come back and we'll just soften this color away. Just establishing some darkness. And then we're going to carry this right underneath the vase. Applying pressure as we apply the color and then we'll blend using much less pressure. So as you apply this, add plenty of pressure, and then when you go to soften this, we're going to use a much lighter touch just to kind of tickle and kind of move the paint around a little bit. So nice and dark, right up under the vase, and then we're just going to kind of soften this color out. If I need to, I can pick up a little bit more floating medium work that into the brush, and then come back and soften this again. If you're not liking the way this is looking, you can always take one of your blue shop towels and fold part of it around your finger. And you can just come back in and gently rub and soften this color. And that's an easy way to get a nice gradient uh, if your blending skills are not working for you. So adding some more shading under here. And then I will just take this shop towel, wrap it around my finger, and we'll just come back and we'll just soften that shading and we'll get a nice gradient going on there. All right, so that's enough uh, for down here at the bottom for the time being. And so we're gonna take the same color brush loaded the same way. We'll just establish some of the dark color that's underneath this flower and what kind of defines the right shoulder of our base. So again, just brushing this dark color on, letting some of it carry out across the jar, and then over here to establish the darker shoulder of our base. And I'm just going to carry that color down a little bit. And I'm actually going to carry some of this dark color up above my table line just to add some interest on the outside of the vase. And you can see I'm just really softening that out. So it's a very, very mild bit of darkness over there, but it's distinct from the table line. And if I need to, I can quickly just hit this area with my heat gun. I can dry that and then I can add a little bit more dark color just to reestablish the initial shadows. So that's pure black and Payne's gray on one half of the brush and just some floating medium on the other half of the brush. And I can come back in here very easily, just establish an extra dark bit right there at the table line just to give myself some extra contrasting shading there. I can add some more dark over here on this side. Just reinforcing that dark area. And if you need to do this more than once, that's fine. Uh, everything doesn't have to be done all at once. You can add color on, you can get something looking just the way you like it, and then dry it with a heat gun to really lock it in place. 
and that extra little dark under there really just cleaned that area up. So that's looking much better already. Now let's turn our attention to our red flowers. And we are going to very quickly and very casually uh, begin to establish the red flower shapes. And here are a few words that will help you understand what we're going to do with our flowers. We don't want them to all be the same size. They're not all the same shape. And the outside edges need to be interesting to look at. So I'm going to take my three quarter inch flat brush that I was using, I'm going to dress it with some floating medium. I did not clean it out. So I've got some black and paints gray in there, but I'm adding some alizarin crimson. And I'm going to pick up a little sap green, which is the complementary color of alizarin crimson. Red and green are complements. So what I'm creating here on my palette is a very rich, dark burgundy color. And I can add a little Payne's Gray to this to really intensify this dark color. I want it to be noticeably red. Um, it shouldn't be brown and it shouldn't be green and it shouldn't have a purple tone to it. It should look like a nice maroon color. And I am going to, I'm using the three quarter inch flat brush and I'm holding the brush with the handle in the palm of my hand and I'm gripping it loosely like this and I'm going to paint using the corner of my brush. So I'm going to pick any flower, it doesn't matter which flower you start with, and I'm going to begin to kind of stroke on uh, flower petals. using the corner of the brush as I need to, because I don't want to paint actually every individual petal. I want to just establish some dark color on to form the shape of the flower. So just brushing some of this on, just making my flower have some shape, and making sure that the outside edge of the flower uh, looks fairly interesting. Uh, that's the most important thing because some of this will be covered up and some of it will not be covered up. Uh, so I'm just moving this uh, color into the center of the flower because I don't want to have uh, big gaps showing there. And so I've got a, another little flower that's hiding behind this one. So I'm just, again, kind of painting on the corner of the brush, just establishing the uh, flower petal shapes. And so just that quickly, I've got two uh, flowers established. You want to work carefully while you're doing this, but you also don't want to take all day, or sometimes I'll say you just don't want to make a career out of establishing the shape of the flowers. So getting this flower on here, just getting these uh, kind of petal shapes on, here's our center. And so these petals come down here right over the uh, edge of the vase. Getting some petals going on here. And we're not uh, painting each individual petal. That's why your design doesn't have all of the petals neatly and carefully drawn for you to trace and transfer to your canvas. Uh, some of this is a little bit left up to the individual artist in you. Just getting some dark color on. And as I'm spreading that color out, it's looking not red enough to me. It looks a little too brown. So we're just going to come back and add a little bit more alizarin crimson there. And now we've got another flower form uh, blocked in. Got this flower here. So this is where the center of that flower is. And we'll pick up that same color, brush mixing it as we go. And we will establish flower petal shapes, making sure that the flower is interesting. Just scrubbing this on as you need to. As I said, some of this will be visible when we're finished. 
Uh, some of it won't be. Uh, so we're just kind of establishing the base for our red flowers. And no, this isn't bright red. This is more of a uh, burgundy. It's a shading color. I'm just going to add a little bit more dark right here around the center and we'll darken here where this flower goes underneath this other one. Just to begin to establish uh, where these flowers actually fall in our arrangement. Okay, so now this flower form is obviously behind this one. And just don't even worry about that little bit trailing up there. That's perfectly fine. So again, alizarin crimson, sap green, little Payne's gray. Just brush mix this beautiful burgundy color. If you need to, you can add a little floating medium to that to help make it move for you a little bit better, help make it a little bit more transparent. And then we will move on to uh, this far flower over here. We've got a little flower that's kind of tucked down here. So let's get some nice darkness going on here. And then we've got almost a flower that's almost in, in profile here. So again, establishing the dark part where it uh, joins its calyx back there, and then just getting some uh, interesting shape going on here. Keep wanting to come back and mess with that, but I think probably best left that alone. And we'll know in a little while if that was the right decision or not. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more alizarin crimson because I want this flower to be a little bit brighter. So less dark color on my brush now. And once again, here is the center of our flower. And so we are establishing our flower shape. And for many of you, this will be probably one of the hardest parts of this whole painting to do is because this is just a little bit less refined than what you may be used to. Just kind of let go and enjoy this kind of freer artistic expression. Okay, so we have now established our uh, flower shapes on our canvas. I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my shop towel and then take whatever's left on my brush and I'm just going to kind of reinforce some of this red color down here. Just scrub, scrub, scrub some of this on, softening it back into the shadow. I can add a little bit of floating medium to my brush just to help this move around a little bit. And then I can take my shop towel, wrap it around my finger, and then just come back in and soften that a little bit. And now we've added some more interesting red down here. And I don't need to do it over here because I'm going to keep this a little bit darker and a little bit more on the moody side. Now, let's evaluate what we've got going on and make sure that our flowers are all distinct. They're different sizes, different shapes. Uh, the outside edges look a little different on all of them and that they're uh, pleasing right now. And then we can um, get caught up with this, get your flowers up to this point, heat gun to the painting and dry it completely. We have established our flower forms and now we're going to turn our attention back to uh, the glass vase and the water in the vase. So I'm going to begin to establish some dark color on the top of my water. So I've taken my colored pencil and added just a curved line here to indicate where the water uh, would be pressed up against the jar inside the vase. So I'm going to load my uh, number 12 flat brush with some folk art floating medium. And I'm just going to brush a little folk art floating medium above the water line here on the vase. And now I'm going to pick up some Payne's Gray just on one half of the brush, blend that out on the palette, and actually pick up just a little, very, very small bit of 
pure black just to deepen that color just a little bit. And I'm going to begin over here on the right hand side and I'm just going to darken in the edge of the vase. Just follow that water line down and across here. And then I'm going to soften that color up. And as it gets over here toward the right hand edge, we're just going to let that color darken and just kind of brush and soften this out, just creating a little bit of a dark edge right here. So you could see on this side, I've got my transparent yellow ochre over there, and then I've got my darkness over here on this side, and I'm just gonna continue that up, pick up some more dark color on the same half of the brush, and then I'm just really going to darken this very dramatically right here at the outside edge of the vase, and then soften that where it comes underneath the rim of the jar and just pat and soften this very, very dark color on right there so that we've created a bit of drama there. And I'm going to also add some dramatic dark down here on the lower left-hand side of the vase. Just again, brushing that on and softening it. And let that color kind of ease around. You can add some extra paint and soften that out. Again, light pressure to finesse the paint, much firmer pressure to apply the paint. And we're just going to let that just soften and we're just creating a little bit of dark over on that area. And I want it to be even darker, so I'm just gonna quickly take my heat gun and dry this corner. I'm going to come back, that's cooled off enough. So I'm gonna come back in here and really just create a very dark, dramatic corner to my base. And we're doing this because we're going to be setting ourselves up to apply some glints and highlights there. And so we need to have some dark areas established so that our uh, highlights really show up. So taking that same number 12 flat brush and adding more pure black to the dark half of the brush. And blend that out here on my palette. Paying very close attention to the gradient of color that I have in my brush. And then I'm just going to darken this area here of the, this portion of the reflection and carry that color underneath the vase again, just darkening that even more. And we'll just blend and soften this color, having it nice and dark up there and then softening it out. Just like that, so we've got a nice dark area there. And we're gonna do the same thing over here on this portion of our reflection. Just really coming in there and establishing a very dark area and then blending and softening that out. Can wipe my brush off on my shop towel and then come back and soften that color a little bit more. Okay, now let's see where we need to add a little bit more interest. We've got to do something up here with kind of what would be the screw top area of a jar. And I use the word jar and vase interchangeably here because we are basically using our jar as a vase. So I'm just gonna put a little dark color right underneath the screw area, and I'm just going to bring some dark color down. And using my brush the same way, I'm going to just 
kind of establish a little bit of a darkness at the top of the vase, and then just casually uh, creating uh, some dark bits to kind of give the illusion of the um, thickness and thinness of a glass vase there. So I'm gonna wipe my brush out and then rinse it out in my brush basin. And I'm going to load this brush with some yellow light and a little bit of yellow ochre because the yellow light's gonna be just too bright by itself. So we're really lightening up some yellow ochre. And I'm going to establish a little bit lighter area right over here on the left shoulder of the vase. and just soften that in a little bit, but I want that to stay kind of bright. I'm also going to add in some of this lighter color next to the stem and down in this portion of the vase, but I do not want to cross the water line there. So just brushing some of this up, just creating a little bit of a light area there. And then putting a little bit of this gold color here on the neck of the jar. Just put that color on and it's yellow light and yellow ochre brush mixed together. And we're going to then do that on the next segment. And then finally up here at the top, just add a little bit on there. And I'm going to add some white to this now. Just brush mix this in. And I'm going to begin to establish some lights on our base. So coming right in here at the top. Just establishing that bit of a highlight there. I'm going to do it right below that. Right in that area. And then I'm going to do a little bit right here. drop down here onto the front of our base and we're going to put in a little bit of a light highlight there. Just put it on and just kind of flick it around and soften that out just a little bit. And down here at the bottom where I have this gold, I'm going to just flick a little bit of a highlight on there. And because we have a little bit of a highlight here on our base, we are going to have to have a little bit of a highlight down here in the reflection. Just, you want to mimic what you've done above, but it's never gonna match up exactly. So don't, don't worry too much about that. Now more yellow ochre and yellow on my brush. I'm just changing my color a little bit. And over here, I'm just gonna add a bit of a little glint of color right there. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of a glint down here in my reflection. So we've added some white, and we're just going to reflect that little bit right up there. So now you can see how we're starting to mimic what's happening here in our vase down in our reflection. So I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm not going to clean it in water, because now I've got my warm color in my brush. And I'm just going to pick up some titanium white and work that into the brush. No floating medium, no water. And I'm going to establish a little bit of my brighter highlight on my vase. So I'm gonna lay the brush virtually parallel to the surface. And you can see how this white highlight clings to the weave of the canvas. So it's not just a solid blotch, but you've got some of that speckledy look. And I am, I've got a little bit more paint on my brush now, so I'm going to come back in here and I am gonna add a bit more of a solid highlight. But I have this nice glint uh, working away from it. So there are little bits of light flares and I'm going to add another glint down here. Just some light bouncing around. And we're going to add a little bit here. Here, here, and here. So we've just created that kind of light area and now our glass is firmly in front of our 
stems that are inside. So if you want to uh, play with your vase a little bit at this point, I see one more thing that I want to do before we really pause. So I've got my uh, brush. I've wiped the light gold colors out of my brush. Not going to clean it in water, but I am going to pick up uh, just a little bit of naphthol crimson and alizarin crimson on my brush and some floating medium. And I'm going to wipe most of that off on my blue shop towel so I have just a little bit of uh, red color. And I'm just going to add a very little bit of a glow over here on the left hand side of the vase and just brush that right down over that stem just to kind of add a little bit of warmth there to the vase. And just bouncing some of this red color around can add a little bit of a glow here. And then because we've put that color in the vase, we also need to put some of that color here in the reflection just to strengthen that a little bit, just like that. All right, so that was a lot of information to take in. So if you want to pause your video, you can do that and let everything dry. I just wanted to, now that I'm looking at this a little more closely, I want to come back and just darken this line using my colored pencil just a little bit, just really emphasize that there. Okay, so bring your painting to this stage and uh, pause the video and dry it so that it is completely dry so that we can move on to our flowers. We have uh, added color to our vase. We've added a waterline to our vase, uh, brought some highlights to our vase, done the same thing down here in our reflection. And one thing that we need to do now is to add just a little bit of a, a detail here right at the front of our waterline. So I'm going to use my number two script liner brush and I'm going to thin down a little bit of yellow light, yellow ochre, and titanium white. This is very, very light. It's not quite white, but it is very, very light in color. And then because I've thinned this paint down, I always want to blot where the bristles meet the ferrule so that I can take away any excess moisture from the liner brush and have no worries about water running from the ferrule all the way down the bristles and onto my painting. So I'm going to try to stay out of this as best I can, but I do need to come in here and very, very carefully paint a very, very fine line right underneath that black water line that we established. And then soften it at the outside edges. Just making sure that this is bright right across the front of our base and across our stems there. So that little bit of light there really just helps set our stems into the water behind the front pane or the front plane of the base. Now we are going to turn our attention to our flower petals. And I'm going to begin uh, to use a number 10 filbert brush. And a filbert brush is like a flat brush that has a rounded edge to it. So this brush doesn't have any corners on it, which is perfect for painting flower petals. So I'm going to load my brush with naphthol crimson. And this is a very, very thick color. And I'm using it uh, in its thick form, just loading my brush with this. And we are going to lay on some flower petals. So I'm just going to pick a flower to start on and I'm going to lay my brush down parallel to the surface and I'm just going to pull from the outside edge in toward the center of the flower. You can see that I'm just really kind of troweling some of that red color on. And I'm going to do that again to make my next petal. And I'm going to make sure that the outside edge of that flower petal is interesting to look at and let the color trail off as it moves in toward the center of the flower. So heavy pressure to start off with and very light pressure, just kind of wisping the color as it comes in toward the center. That's creating already automatic shading on my flower petal. Some of these petals can be very thin 
and other petals can be wide and bold, have kind of a ragged edge to them, and then just let that color trail off again as it comes in toward the center of the flower. So stroking on these flower petals. Want to make sure that the flower petals are different sizes and shapes. We don't want them all the same width. We are striving for good variety in our flower petal shapes. And I just love these bright red daisies. They are such wonderful, happy, fun flowers. And stroke that color on. Let it fade as it moves in toward the center of the flower. Some of these petals should be wider. Some should be more narrow. Uh, some have a little jagged edge to them. Just don't want to have everything looking the same. We want big changes in shape for interest and variety. All right, so we've got another little flower that's kind of hiding in here in the back, and it's got a little foreshortened business. So we're just going to kind of create this little kind of cup there at the front where our center would be hiding back behind there. And then we'll just stroke on a little petal here and there and some back here. At the back, I don't want to give this flower too much importance because it is kind of at the outside edge of our painting and it's also a flower that's kind of at the back of the painting. So again, just enough to give it some petals so that everybody knows it's a red flower, but not, uh, not giving it all the details that we will to some of the bigger, brighter, flowers to the center of our painting. All right, so that's all I'm going to do back there. That's plenty for everybody to realize that we've got a flower going on back there. And now we're going to focus our attention on this flower and we're going to let some of this uh, that's underneath here just get a dusting of our naphthol crimson. And I'm not going to fuss with that too much because that's kind of hiding there in the shadows. And then we're going to bring out some of our brighter reds as our flower emerges from underneath the other one. You have a great reference photo to look at while you're painting. So again, some petals are going to be very big and bold and other petals are going to be more narrow. Uh, some are going to have a ragged edge to them and that's fine. What we are looking for, once again, is to make sure that the outside edge of our flower petals are interesting looking and that there is variety within the shape of the flower petals. Not the same size, not the same width, just as much variety as you can get in your uh, flower petals is what we're looking for. Nobody wants their daisies to end up looking like spokes on a wagon wheel. That is absolutely not what we are looking for. So avoid that kind of wagon wheel imagery as you stroke this color on. And some of this color is going on rather thick and some of it's a bit more uh, kind of scraped on and that's fine because we are having variety and that's what we really want. Moving on to our next flower. We're going to begin to create some interesting shapes at the end of our flower petals. And this is why when we put that initial dark color on there, we weren't really trying to paint in uh, individual flower petals because as you can see here, I'm not necessarily following 
uh, exactly what we had uh, for the petal shapes as we're doing this. Those were just general guidelines for where our flower petals go. And you never want your guidelines to be your girdle. Just let it help you establish the general shape of the flower, but give yourself some room for variation and change in petal shape, petal size, Not all flower petals need to be rounded at the outside edge. Some of them can be a little bit jagged, some more pointed. It's all just a matter of getting some interesting flower shapes going on. Okay, I think that's perfectly fine for right now. And remember, we're not done with these flowers. We've got more to put on them. And so we're going to really be altering kind of how these flowers look overall. So I've got a flower here that's hiding, um, kind of hanging down a little bit. So we're just gonna give a little bit of life to this, just to kind of highlight it a little bit. And then we'll move on to this uh, flower in profile. Every time I paint a design, um, it will be quite different from the time I painted it before because I've gained experience uh, since the first one I painted. And sometimes my artistic choices will be very, very different from what they were the first time I'm painting something. But we have one more flower to get uh, to basically turn red. So we're going to uh, just begin to uh, develop some of these petal shapes and restroke stuff as much as you need to to really establish the shape of the petal that you want. And if I've got a big gap between some petals that I don't want, I can just always come in there and just like put the edge of a petal right in there. Once again, just working around the flower, making sure that I have interesting edges at the outside, trying very hard to make a conscious decision not to uh, turn this into a wagon wheel with straight spokes coming out. Okay, we now have all of our flowers uh, turned kind of red. So I'm going to come to my palette and I'm going to make another mixture of a paint color. I'm going to take, uh, so I've got some red light out on my palette, but I'm also going to put out a little bit of uh, pure orange. And so what I'm going to do is to take my red light color and I might leave some of it uh, just unchanged and I'm gonna take a portion of this and I'm going to add a little bit of pure orange to some of my red light just to give me a bit lighter color to work with. This is still very red looking, but it is lighter. So just mix that together. You may add just another little bit of 
orange to this because I want it to be significantly brighter. There I have a lighter red color. And I'm going to wipe off my uh, filbert brush. Really pinch and wipe that naphthol crimson out of the brush. And now I'm going to just pick up some red light and we're going to use this red light to establish some lighter petals on our darker flowers. So over here, this flower is uh, behind this one. So this is gonna be a darker flower, but I do want to pull a little bit of highlight color on here. So I'm just using the straight red light and lay the brush down, pull and let the color drag off. And you can see that this red light is much brighter than the naphthol crimson that was on there to begin with. So we'll just add another little bit of a highlight here. And you can see how that really just begins to make this flower much, much brighter and more interesting. And I don't want to put this everywhere. I just created a new petal there that looks pretty good. And so you see now how we have uh, two different shades of red on this particular flower. And that already begins to give it lots of interest and dimension. The most important thing that you can give the viewer of your painting is a painting that's interesting to look at. All right, so we're going to come over here and we will take some of our red light color and just add some zings of red light on that flower. And then we're done with that for right now. And this little flower that's back here in profile. Just pull some highlights on. They do not have to go on every petal. And they don't have to line up perfectly with the petal that you initially painted. We're just getting in there and getting some bright red on there. Okay, so now we've tackled three flowers already, and then we just have um, four more flowers to go with our highlights. So I'm gonna continue highlighting with the red light uh, by itself. We haven't altered this color, but we will come in here and we will begin to pop on some additional highlights. I'm just loving how that has that nice little tip and angle up there at that petal. And then we'll come in here and pull on some highlights there. And once again, we're not trying to blend any colors together. We're simply laying on additional highlight colors. And I'm much more concerned about how this outside edge is going to look. And then there we've got a really interesting petal. And you can see some of the uh, red light, how it just clings to the weave of the canvas and you get this beautiful uh, texture effect. And I think that is really, really interesting and very fun to look at. Just stroke on some highlights where you want your petals to be out in front and brighter. And you see again how this just strings uh, and clings to the weave of the canvas and gives you a really interesting texture there. So on this petal, I'm just going to leave that highlight there and leave this portion of the petal without any additional highlight on it. So you don't have to cover up everything that you put on before. And you don't have to do this all in one stroke of the brush. If you feel like you need to come back and soften something, you can definitely do that. But please don't play in the paint. Put it on there, stroke it on, and leave it.
Okay, and I'm loving how we've got this pedal now, which has a clear um, edge to it that's much lighter and leaving this little pedal back behind there. So that's how you create this kind of movement uh, in your flower. And again, I've not dried the naphthol crimson that we put on there. So some of it's mixing in a little bit, some of it's staying uh, a little bit drier where we had a thinner application of paint, but it's just wonderful to have the variation in our uh, flower petals that we're getting here. So moving down here to this flower, I'm gonna leave this area here alone and just begin to add some highlights out here, just out at the tips, and then letting that uh, just kind of trail off there, which I think is absolutely wonderful. And I know I sound like I'm singing my own praises here, but I just want you to um, learn to put the paint on there and be happy with what you get because more than likely, the stroke that you put on your flower petal is going to be just fine. It's not gonna need lots of revision or uh, changes. As long as you are creating some uh, nice petal shapes, then you're gonna be just fine. Probably going to need to put a little more red light out on my palette right now because I'm just running out of color. But this is the beginning of a very, very uh, bright, intense uh, flower painting. All right, so we have some more red light now. I'll load my brush up with that. And we will once again begin out here at the outside edge and just kind of trowel some of this color on and because the folk art pure artist pigments are so thick this is where you get this wonderful kind of impasto uh, effect where your paint is very very thick and gives you a wonderful kind of texture um, to your painting and this is a little difficult for me because i want to turn my brush around a little bit there we go so now we've got a nice petal out there and then two more flowers to go. So I'm going to take my red light and I'm gonna come over here and just begin to add some quick little highlight strokes and form some petals. And this is the happy fun part of this painting, are creating these beautiful, bright red petals. And if you have someone in your life who loves red, this is a beautiful painting for them because it is just happy and full of bright red color. So again, you can lay the brush down and just kind of skim to get uh, some of this texture and these wonderful red light highlights on your daisy petals. That one wasn't exactly what I wanted there. So I'm just gonna come back and give it a quick flick and just kind of reshape that a little bit. And I think we're good with that, leaving just this last flower here. And I'm going to pick up my red light and then some of my red light plus orange mixture here, because I want this flower to be the brightest flower in the painting. So just starting out with a little extra bright color here. And then we are just laying this on creating these beautiful red orangey highlights
And this filbert brush is great because it doesn't give us any harsh uh, brush marks because it doesn't have any hard corners to do that with. The corners are rounded off of the filbert brush. up paint as you need to and you can just lay it on there and now I'm going to take this lighter red color and here and there on the painting just come back and just hit a few of my brighter petals with this we're not done with our flowers yet we're going to do some more highlighting but I just want to lay on just a few petals here and there that are a little bit brighter Okay, we have now uh, added two highlights to our uh, red flowers. This is a good time to uh, stop the video and evaluate your painting and bring it up to this level of finish with the uh, naphthol crimson and red light highlights, and then uh, finally adding some of the red light plus pure orange highlights. So get your painting to this level, and we will come back and begin to add some of the final highlights and centers to our painting. All right, we have dried our uh, daisy petals. And as you remember, we put on naphthol crimson, and then we uh, put on red light, and then some of these petals have a mixture of red light plus pure orange. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my mixture of red light and pure orange, and I'm just gonna emphasize a few more of these little petals just load my filbert brush, and just add some accents of this color. And I don't want to do this all over, but just here and there, just help brighten up some of these uh, little flower petals. And you can move around on your flowers. You don't always have to work around one whole flower at a time. Just add some of these little brighter pops of highlight where you think you want some of your petals to be brighter. And then what I've made here on my palette, I've taken some of this red light plus pure orange. I've added more orange, and I've also added some Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Yellow Light to this. So now I've made a bit of a uh, brighter orangey pink color. And we're going to take this and we're going to start adding this where we want some of our flower petals to be the very brightest. And so right here, the center flower, we're just going to lay on some of this very bright color. And you see just how bright and wonderfully rich that color is. So I'm just going to take some medium yellow, Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Medium Yellow, and brush mix this in and make a color between our red light and pure orange, and then our lighter color where we had added more yellow light to that. So just creating a bit of a lighter red that's a little darker than our previous highlights. So you'll see when I put this on that it's not quite as bright as that, but still much brighter than our red light color. So we'll just stroke some of this on. And we get these wonderful bright highlights on our flower petals. And I can pick up some of that much lighter kind of peach coral color and just pull on some of these highlights. And it really does just light up the flower petals.
And again, you can see how that color just trails off as it moves toward the center of the flower. The more confident you are, the faster and easier it is to just pull on these highlights. And again, they don't have to fill up the entire flower petal, and you definitely don't want them on absolutely every single petal. Just adding some here and there, just creating interesting shapes at the tip of our flower petals. And then trying so hard not to play with that too much. There we go. And we'll just make some more of these brighter petals. And this really does start to make uh, this whole painting really just sing. It's a very narrow little flower petal there. This one's a little bit wider. Here we've got a big fat flower petal there. So you could see we have lots of variety here, which is exactly what we're looking for. We don't want our flowers to all be the same. Instead of mixing up a puddle of this color, you could be brush mixing this every time, and so you would have much more variety in your highlight colors. But I think that's nicely brightened up there. And then we're not going to do this all over the place. I'm coming back into my red light and pure orange mixture, just with what I had on my brush, and I'm just going to add some selective highlights on these other flower petals. I don't want them to be as bright as these flowers are. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do on that flower. And again, I'm you now just kind of brush mixing between these two colors, adding a little bit of medium yellow there, because I would rather these colors be a little bit more to the orange side than to be uh, very, very pink in color. So just where we want to come back and add a few little bright highlights. That looks great now. I've taken this and made this petal appear to be resting on top of the other petal. So you're going to have to evaluate uh, each flower that you paint and decide where you need to add some of these brighter highlights on. And again, they don't need to be everywhere. And at this little uh, flower out here at the edge, I'm just going to put a little bit of a highlight on a couple of petals out there. And that's all we're gonna do on that flower there. All right, so now we have beautiful red flowers that have no centers to them. So I'm going to shift to another little filbert brush, uh, or you could clean out that brush. I happen to have an extra uh, number 12 filbert here. And I'm loading my brush with yellow ochre, and I'm just going to begin to tap and pat on the center of a flower. And this is full strength yellow ochre. So it's got a little bit of hiding power to it and it's also fairly stiff in consistency. We're just gonna pat that on this center. I'm basically putting the yellow ochre in the center of the flower and then letting it trail off on the lighter edge and not even worrying about putting anything on the darker edge of my flower center.
Okay, now then let's make a dark shading color for our flower center by mixing sap green and alizarin crimson or naphthol crimson. Just need to add some red to our green. I want to put out a little bit more alizarin crimson. Because alizarin crimson is going to be a better choice than naphthol crimson here. So sap green, alizarin crimson, and we'll just mix a little tiny bit of Payne's gray into this. So we are making a dark color, kind of a brownish color, because red and green will make brown. And then the Payne's gray just makes it even darker. So I'm going to begin to tap this color on to form the dark edge of my flower center. And then I'm just going to tap and pat that color out to soften it away from the center. And because we have that dark color where we initially darkened our flower shapes, that's going to disappear out into that darkness of the flower. So I made a dark brown color rather than uh, going to a bottle of burnt umber or something like that for the flower center, because this mixed color is more visually interesting than burnt umber would be because this has a little nuance of green in it and it's got some burgundy in it and I'm just going to tap and soften these colors where the yellow ochre meets the brown mixture. Just kind of muddy that up just a little bit, softening those two colors together. Soften that together a little bit. Very easy little flower centers, and we're not doing too much to call attention to them because we really want the attention focused on the bright red flower petals. Just softening that as I need to, just so there isn't such a harsh line there. And I think that looks pretty good now. Okay, I'm gonna clean that color out of my brush. Rinse it in water. Blot the color out on your soft absorbent rag. And I've noticed while I've been painting, there's a little bit of our painting that kind of bothers me a little bit. And so I'm going to take uh, some sap green and just a little alizarin crimson, just to tone that down. I've kind of missed my stem kind of stops here, and there's it's just stopping in midair. So I need to adjust that. So I've mixed up a little bit of sap green and alizarin crimson on my brush. And so now I'm just going to add that darkness right in that area and make my stem actually join that flower. And that looks so much better now. And I could stop worrying about that. And now I'm going to take some of my sap green and alizarin crimson together on my brush. And I'm going to paint in, uh, just give myself a little bit darker stem there, and then just kind of paint in uh, the calyx of this daisy back here, just get some color in. And the same thing with the back side of this daisy, just brush a little bit of that on there. Then I'm going to take some sap green and medium yellow, brush mix that together. Or I could add a little yellow ochre might be a better choice there. So I've got a dark, kind of dull green color, but it's lighter than what I just put on there. So I am going to add kind of a little suggestion of the back side of this little flower. Just highlight that stem. You can make that a little bit brighter. Just a little more yellow ochre.
just come back in here and just highlight that just a little bit, keeping it very, very um, broken up and very undefined. Just a little bit of light color going on there. And that gives the illusion that you've painted the back of your uh, daisy petals or your daisy flower. Yeah, just a little bit more of a highlight there. Okay, so now we need to highlight our flower centers. So I'm going to wipe my brush. I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre and some Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Yellow Light and just brush mix these together to create a light yellow color. And I'm just going to dab some of this light yellow on to my flower centers, just creating a little bit of a light area. Just pat that on. Just highlighting it a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more white to this mixture. Just to make this even brighter. Just going to add a little bit of this much brighter highlight just to make these little flower centers a little brighter. And there we have Miss Anne's daisies. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed painting Miss Anne's daisies. Join me next time when we'll be painting this landscape to title Trees at Dusk. Come on, let's paint.